So the plan is, is I'm gonna take my current air compressor that I use, plus this tank, which was an air compressor that had these old school compressor and motor on it that they do work, but I got a good deal on that one. So I use that one instead. So I got this 80 gallon, this 80 gallon tank. And then I also got this brand new cobalt compressor on a good deal. The plan is to tie all three of these together to have 240 gallons worth of air and the combined CFM of this compressor and this compressor feeding into one tank, which will ultimately feed up to the garage. We're in the basement right now. Um, and the plan is to be able to have enough CFM to efficiently run a sandblaster. Now, I wasn't initially gonna do this, but that was too good of a deal to pass up. I've been wanting to get a sandblast set up. Um, didn't get anything, came across this. Um, in order to be efficient with the sandblaster, you need a compressor with a lot of CFM, which is either gonna be really expensive or run off of three-phase power. I'm cheap and I don't have three-phase power, so hopefully the combination of these will be good enough to run a pretty decent sandblaster. And then ultimately I wanna be able to sandblast both my trailers, the skid steer and the plow frame um, for my plow. So I'll show you all the fittings I have. We're gonna assemble everything and we're gonna start assembling all the fittings down here. So it's gonna come off of this one, T in there, come off of this one, T in there, and then one main feed out the top to through the wall to the garage. And then the drains, the water drain on the bottom of each tank is gonna to connect to them, go up to a junction point here. That's gonna go up so I can drain it from upstairs in the garage. And then the power is gonna come from this feed over here. That's why it's open and I was looking at things. Um, main feed, which I had already set up to feed the compressor, will work off of here with the pressure switch off of, I think I'm gonna use this pressure switch off of this tank with a set of contactors to feed both compressor motors and they'll feed together. So, you got a big pile of fittings here. Um, kinda explain what I'm doing when I'm down there, but for now, um, we're gonna finish. I'll get this one taped up Everything's gonna be taped up with Blue Monster Teflon tape. Probably the best stuff out there. It's a lot thicker than the stuff you get around at your parts store, stuff like that. You can order it on Amazon, get a couple of rolls of it and you'll be good. So we'll finish getting everything taped up and then we'll tighten in and pre-assemble as much as we can um, up here on the workbench and the vise and then bring it downstairs into the basement where the air compressors are. Um, we'll get the whole plumbing side of it taken care of. We have push lock hose that I'm using for everything. Don't mind those, see what those are later. Um, and then electric wise, the plan is gonna be using one of the pressure switches on the compressor to control the contactors. The contactors will be what is gonna feed the motor um, to each compressor. The pressure switch I don't believe is rated for um, both loads of the motors. So that's why I'm gonna have everything driven off of contactors instead. Plus, if I ever wanted to only run one compressor, I just have to disable one of the contactors. I don't have to go into the pressure switch and do that. And the pressure switch, I'm gonna drive off of the middle tank. Um, each tank is gonna have, or each compressor will have a check valve coming off of it. Um, I don't really think it's necessary. I did a little bit of research and there wasn't anything real solid out there for answers. I'm gonna run it anyways. It just kinda, it's not gonna hurt anything, um, but it could help. And then um, everything's gonna be ball valve so that way I can isolate stuff if I need to. Don't have to drain the entire system in order to work on it. And then when I get up top into the garage, I'm gonna use the bulkhead fittings I have here. Um, this is gonna be for air supply and this is gonna be for the tank drain. Is going to go into an outlet cover like that, get mounted in the wall, and it'll just be the air coming out of the wall just like that. Got a pressure gauge to add on, and then a pressure relief valve um, just for safety. Going to have a relief valve on every single tank. Not that I foresee there being any issue, but you know, for as cheap as they are, it's, it's better to be safe than sorry. So, we're going to get this taped up, we'll get all these tightened up.
So I started working on the electrical side of it. So I got a little enclosure box off of Amazon, two contactors. Um, not going to tell you what I'm using for cable or contactors or anything like that. If you're going to do this, you spec it out yourself. Just make sure that everything's rated properly. Uh, I am using contactors with a coil of 110 volt, and that way I use one line of the 220 that's already in here to power the... Um, the coil in there so there's going to be a main feed coming in that's going to split off the two one comes in for the coil control and then one out to uh to each motor and we're going to be using some wire furls on the end just to kind of keep everything nice and and neat and allow the connections to be made easily So we got some main feed coming from the main breaker on the wall, which feeds two lines, line one and line three is what I use of the contactor, um, fed to one and then jumped to the other. We're taking one line of the incoming voltage to feed this wire, which is gonna go to the pressure switch. The line coming back from that, which will be the black one, goes to the coil to these, and that connection is jumped together. Other side of the coil is grounded. Everything is grounded across the main DIN rail on the bottom. And then, you know, your line comes into there, grounds as well. Um, the entire thing will be grounded through one of the mounting holes to the top of the tank. And then one wire here is connected, goes to one compressor, and the other wire goes to the other compressor. So originally I showed you guys that box in this cover. Um, I wasn't thinking when I was buying the stuff, I needed a box that was for uh, old construction. So old construction boxes have these tabs here that um, flip out and grab the sheetrock when you go to tighten them. And I just cut the back of that. I got a blank panel and drilled two holes in it for the bulkhead connections here. So we're gonna use the hole that I had there from before. Um, it's a little bit big for this box, but I can patch that up with putty after. Get the box mounted, get these bulkheads set up, and then run the airline down into the basement and connect it. So pretty much all wrapped up downstairs. Um, finished up the rest of the plumbing, got all the drains connected, everything else. I ran the airline supply and the drain up through the wall upstairs. And then I also ran, ran the unloader airline here so the the way this line works is that it relieves the pressure in between the check valve and the tank and the head so that way when the compressor stops it, there's no pressure left on the compressor so that's triggered by a valve and the pressure switch here which is teed off and then ran to both uh, air compressors this one originally had it ran up here but the temperature was too hot and it blew out the line so i moved it down to the bottom just like it is on that one over there um we got it set to cut cut in and out so the max pressure 
is right around 150 and then the cut in pressure is around 120 and then upstairs we'll set the regular to like 110 uh, 110 is plenty of pressure for normal shop stuff and being that the compressor will kick on above that set pressure we'll always have that pressure available at whatever we're using so we're not going to have to worry about a pressure loss it's uh it's continued so that pretty much wraps it up down here um the one change that i did make is that i did get rid of the check valves that i had on either compressor um, as i thought about it I didn't want those there because it wouldn't be able to equalize pressure. Pressure, And if you had to air down one tank to replace the fitting or something like that, you'd be kind of stuck with airing up the tanks. So that's where we're at with this, and we'll wrap up upstairs. So we left off with getting the box mounted on the wall. I already got the lines hooked up, the bulkheads connected. Um, we are quite a few months after the fact that I'm getting to this. Um, since then, I've been running it just with an airline ran out of that fitting up to my hose reel here. And now the plan is to take a line out of here, run it up to a regulator that will be mounted up on the wall over there, and then push lock hose out to the air reel. That'll free up this hose to use as an extension. I got a half inch port here, so if I ever run anything heavy probably like a sand blaster or something like that i have a good airport here and then this quarter quarter inch fitting with six mil line here is the remote tank drain so you'll just open up that and it drains the, the water out of the bottom of the tank so we have a couple miscellaneous fittings left over i got the regulator the mounting bracket that i just dropped on the floor All the push lock fittings, the quick disconnects. Um, I either lost the nut for this or it never came with one to mount it. So I 3D printed one. This isn't the one that we're going to use. Um, it's a little bit too small, but I got another one printing right now that should be the right size for that. So side note, I do have a 3D printer. If that's something that you guys want to see more of, let me know. We can venture into that side of things as well. So we'll start again. This all plumbed up, taped up, and uh, mounted up on the wall while we wait for that last nut to finish printing. So I've got the regular mounted up on the bracket. The 3D nut that I printed out the second time worked out great, so we got that bolted up there. Got the old hose disconnected, so we're gonna make up the new hose to go from here up to the regulator, and then it's probably gonna go down into this little wooden shelf that I have over back up through and connect to the hose reel. So. Um, if you've never like used push lock style fittings, which are um, this style barb with push lock hose, it's meant to pretty much slip right on without the need for a hose clamp or anything like that. Um, especially when it gets colder out like it is right now, I found that it helps out a lot just to warm up the hose a little bit with a heat gun. And you can also use a little bit of oil or dielectric grease, all depends on what is gonna be going through there. Um, for compressed air, a little dielectric grease works out pretty good. So that's what we're going to use just to help the hose slide on pretty good. Um, and then a little overkill, but it'll look good, is I'm going to use some P-clips here to mount the hose to the wall just to kind of help hold it in place using sheetrock screws and then these nice little cup washers here. Um, these cup washers are nice because they take in the countersink part of the screw and hold that. Otherwise, it's going to try to bury itself into the clamp. Or if you're trying to use something else, like you're trying to use sheetrock screws to mount something else, like a, a thick piece of steel, it'll pop the head off of those screws. But you use the washer, you can get them nice and tight, and it won't pop the head. So we're going to get this all plumbed up. So like always, change of plans and decide just to run the hose along the top of this little piece of wood here I have as a stop for on my filler rod. Um, going down underneath, there's 
like a two by four that runs along this way. So the hose would have been way out here. And I think it would have just got in the way and kind of look weird. So ran across the back over there instead. Um, tweaked this fitting back a little bit. And then I put a zip tie holder in the back over there. Um, I ran out of P clamps, P clips, but I may put one more here. Um, maybe, I'm not sure, I'll see, but it's, I think it's pretty good how it is. So everything's pretty much all hooked up. I got it regulated to just over 100 PSI. Um, that should give it 100 PSI at the tool when you're running it. And then it does have a water drain there, separator, stuff like that. So I can drain the tank here. If I'm painting or something like that and want to be really sure, at least it does have a separator there. And then high flow port here for sandblasting or a big air gun, something along those lines. So that kind of wraps up this project that took way longer than it should have was looking through the other videos of when I was doing the tank plumbing and that was April of 2021 and it's now January of 2022 but here we are um, nothing happens overnight and projects always come up so like comment subscribe let me know what you guys think let me know what you guys want to see and thanks for watching